afternoon and welcome to Scribble Time with Panda. I'm your host, Nolan, and today we'll be drawing uh, military uh, pandas. So today is Memorial Day, so happy Memorial Day to everyone. Hope you're, you guys are enjoying uh, some barbecue or some uh, time with family and friends. And so let's get started. And so I'm going to do a military theme because usually when I grew up uh, celebrating Memorial Day, we would... Um, my parents would take my siblings and I we would go over to our local cemetery and then we would uh, visit my relatives there so I grew up going to um, going to the cemetery pretty uh, f frequently when I was younger and uh, not to I mean it's not I don't want to make it sound morbid or anything but I I think there's something to it about seeing um, people who have come before you and who have laid the groundwork um, for for you to to be where you are right now and uh, whether that's been positive or negative I think for for me fortunately it's been um, it's been uh, positive and I've had uh, and I'm very thankful for being able to at least have relatives who were um, you know who who gave us examples to um, you know to, to show show uh, be examples of uh, uh, displaying duty and honor that sort of, and those kind of virtues uh, to us so and uh, you know if it was for my grandparents I wouldn't you know obviously I wouldn't be here but um, so that's that's kind of something that I'm pretty thankful for and hopefully I can uh, provide some kind of uh, I could return something to them um, with the legacy I create <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like I'm too uh, uh, yeah too uh, serious about it but that's that's how I feel I think being thankful for what you have is um, definitely something that feels very it's something that would benefit you in the long run uh, let me Actually, one thing I'm, I'm having a little bit trouble here because I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to draw, uh, and I know that I said military, but that's like a big, um, it's kind of a big topic. So I'm gonna go limit it to. Um, I wanted to draw a P40, but I, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to get too ahead of myself here because um, sometimes with drawing these geometric shapes, you can get get a little bit crazy and. and um, little bit carried away with the shape so I'm trying to do something that feels very um, uh, a little bit more manageable because I wasn't trying to draw the character trying to draw the airplane as strictly as I wanted it to be so uh, in terms of like making it realistic proportions and everything I just want um, you know, it's a cartoon, right? There's a panda dry, flying an airplane, so let's let's stick to it as that. Um, my hand is feeling a little bit uh, fatigued because I did some, uh, I did a little bit of yard work yesterday while the weather was good, and now the weather's crummy. So thankfully, I was able to get some of it done. But um, when you kind of do yard work. And then you kind of take a break from it, and then you kind of do it again. It kind of, uh, kind of makes your hand a little bit tired. So my hand's a bit fatigued right now. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, also, I was a little bit late today because um, just had to uh, kind of get some things squared away before I started today's stream. Um, I'm a little bit having a having a little bit of a challenge trying to. Uh, adjust to this uh, afternoon schedule so apologies if that's uh, been of any inconvenience for you guys because um, obviously this is for you guys and I want to try to do it uh, as much as I can uh, obviously there's things like bills to pay and <laughs> among other things so uh, those ha kind of tip Fortunately, they take a little bit of precedence, but um, fortunately, I've been able to at least manage those for now. Um, 
So this is a P40 airplane. It's a P40 Mustang. Uh, that's what I'm basing the design on. Uh, this is the aircraft that my grandfather had worked on uh, when he was part of the uh, Flying Tigers, the American Volunteers Flying Tiger Group. So um, I was thinking about, uh, I actually gone to a couple of these, or gone, not to a couple, what am I saying? I've gone to one reunion back in Dallas. So that was um, very insightful for me just to be able to, uh, just to see the other families that have, that were involved with this group. Um, you know, my grandfather was mechanic, so he, he didn't actually fly the airplanes, but he knew how to work on them. So that was, um, that was his contribution to it. And he was actually from the mainland and had immigrated to America, tried to immigrate to America, um, had a, had a bit of a rough going to it but then uh, managed to find his way to, because he was also betrothed too. Um, he was only, oh boy, he was only, uh, I think he was 16, I think, if I remember right. I could be wrong. But uh, he had, he was betrothed and he, you know, so he had a, a wife who was waiting for him that they actually never met. And so that was a really interesting part of history that, <laughs> That the two of them had never met before and yet uh she was and she was pretty one of the things that helped get her through the war um was the fact and just endure life without her husband was that you know he would write letters to her so it was actually a very um it's kind of a sweet story uh that he would write letters to her even though they they never met and so um I mean, even during that time, they had, uh, you know, they had the, the divisions between the, 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 the uh, trying to talk here while I'm drawing this. They also had like the battles between, um, you know, China was also embroiled in the civil war as well during that time. So there's a lot of conflict, lots of uh, drama going around in that time. And it was, you know, very stressful for everyone living back then i'm sure it's not like today where we you know you have clean car clean you know you have clean streets and running water or uh, you know you have internet to kind of look up things and keep you busy or stream watch netflix and stuff you know this is before those days before there people had access to tv even then it's if you had access it's not like it was it is now so there's something to just remember and just to put yourself in that context uh, whenever uh, whenever you come across these uh, these things of old it's really fascinating and so I hope to one day write a story or do something based upon this type of period and so um, yeah so anyways um, my other grandpa, he served in the war too. And he served in the, and by war, I mean World War II, because uh, we are all getting older and maybe people aren't quite as aware of, of uh, history. But, you know, it was, he served in the African theaters um, uh, driving a supply truck. So, so even though my, Parent, my grandparents were Chinese. They still served in the war, so that was something really cool to to see and to have that history be part of. Um, now I had a dialogue once with my uncle. I mean, sorry, with my grandpa about it once. So uh, that videotape is out there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure. I think my mom has that videotape of that conversation, but that was like a long time ago, back when I think I was in college. Um, I wish. In some ways, I wish I, I had more of those discussions um, when I was, you know, I, was, I, I wish I was a little bit more aware of those kind of of that history.
So I'm just gonna draw a little tiger here. So interesting trivia. Um, the I'm gonna move this two over just slightly. Uh, the logo for the Flying Tigers was actually designed by a Disney artist as well uh, back in the day when Disney was um, contributing to the war effort with uh, their films, propagandist <laughs> film. I mean, I, I, I actually watched them growing up as a kid, so um, actually it's weird because I, I kind of have memories of those films, but, you know, I wasn't, I obviously didn't live during World War II, but... It was interesting thing, interesting to see those, um, the type of things put out, and um, you know, okay, so we got that. I think this is a, I think the steering. I remember right, the steering. The steering wheels were like somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm just going to go with that for now. So you guys can download these coloring sheets at punchypandas.com slash scribble time. So, uh, yeah, it's not a real P40, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a mock-up P40. Maybe I can, I don't know, it'd be kind of cool to make a toy out of this at, at some point, like a little cast resin figure. So anyone out there who wants to take that on, please let me know. Okay, so we got our P40. Next, we are gonna go with a... How about we go with the Tank Panda? All right. I'm gonna do a Tank Panda about right. I'm gonna look up some reference for tanks. Let's see, what kind of tanks do we have here? Tanks are just big cannons. Big twos. There is this one artist, Emerson Tung. He does really cool um, tank stuff. So if you ever get a chance to check out his work, um, yeah, it's, it's some really cool stuff. He does like these mechs based on like old tech uh, tanks. Let's see. Let's put it. Let's put a panda in there. Uh, let's clean this up a bit. And yeah, some people might be like, well, the tank, the, uh, let's flip it this way so that the tank, because I think the manhole covers, cover comes over the other side, but. For the sake of this, uh, for the sake of the stream, let's just go like this. I think we need to change that perspective there. Okay, so we got a can there. 
I'm gonna raise this cannon just a little bit higher. So apologies if I'm kind of going a little bit. Let's draw the star. Yeah, let's let's bring everything a little bit uh, more side, more to the side. How about that? Uh, so let's let's bring let's let's situate this cannon here. I'm gonna just kind of want to change this up a little bit. gonna I think we're gonna just do it's just a giant wedge I'm gonna keep that body a bit small because this is gonna be more of a cartoon than it is gonna be a real life reference but I'm gonna make it still feel a little bit like the old but not you know because the proportions are a little bit different Okay, then we'll do the tracks. Make the tracks like this. Or maybe we can put them like these little grids here to kind of show the wheel tracks okay, and then we're gonna throw one wheel back here one wheel back there So you don't have to be too exact, but sometimes you just put in some little details and it'll just be just be enough to convey what's going on. Excuse me. Make that wheel just slightly bigger, I feel like. Okay. Obviously it's gonna be like this. Add those little grids there. Okay, then we're gonna make it feel a little bit more three dimensional by, you know, adding the front to the track, like so. Maybe we can just bring this in a little bit to kind of show. So anyways, uh, we got some little details like you can add a little, uh, maybe you can add a little bit of rungs like this. Not have to be super accurate, but just enough to kind of give the illusion that there's just kind of a bigger machine that, you know, it looks kind of like a bucket of bolts where it just has little details here and there.
let's add that star there. Let's add one more thing. I feel like I need to soften this edge a little bit because um, I know there's like probably another thing like that. Actually, what helps to really sell this idea that it's like it's uh, it's got some depth to it so add a little bit of shadow like so okay all right so there we got our tank next we got a Okay, how about we did an airplane, now we got a, uh, whew, what's, what would be next? All right, uh, how about we got an airplane and let's get, let's do another one. How about, actually what a cool airplane is a F-22 Raptor, I think it's like pretty, Let's see if we can get that in there. F-22 Raptor is a pretty sleek machine. Let's try doing like a cartoon version of it. So there's gonna be, um, definitely looks like a bird. I mean, all airplanes kind of look like birds because that's what, that's what we can, we can definitely learn from biology, what kind of, how things, let's put let's put that panda a little bit closer in there okay I think one of the distinguishing characteristics of the uh, F-22 Raptors is that it's a very modern looking airplane, right? So we have, um, you know, these kind of the angular shape language that's used a lot in more modern forms, kind of something you see like with, um, you know, something you see similar what what's in like, Iron Man films or the Marvel, you know, the Marvel films, this uh, hexagonal type of shape language. So I'm going to try to employ that here as best as I can, but uh, might be it's going to be a little bit tricky because I'm going to try to uh, get this but also make it feel slightly cartoonish as well. So there's that um, kind of parallel line, that hexagonal form. I'm gonna do another parallel line here. And then um, there's a twin fins at the, Let's make it a little stubbier to make it a little bit cuter, okay? And of course the air, top of the airplane is always gonna be more bumpy than the bottom side because that's how flight works. If you want flight to work, you have to make sure that, according to physics, that the air moving at the bottom of the airplane is gonna be moving faster than the airplane, or the, um, 
air at the top of the airplane has to move faster than the air at the bottom. So you have to account for that. So the air travels on the over the top of the airplane faster because there's more air ground to cover. Okay, so we got that, and we got that. Now, for anyone who's an airplane, uh, I don't know what you call them, wing head, <laughs> someone who's really into airplanes, I know that. I may not be as accurate in my depictions here, so I don't claim to be an airplane expert, but I am just checking this, using this as a way to, um, as, as my own learning experience, let's just say. Uh, so that way I can also, so maybe in the future I can, you know, draw these airplanes a little bit better than they are right now. So I know the um, the rear tail is not uh, is not a triangle like that, but at this perspective, it's going to look like a triangle. Maybe I can just smooth it out there just a slightly. And then this. Yeah, that's a pretty rad looking airplane. If I was an enemy combatant, I'm pretty sure I'd be shivering in my shoes. And I'm just gonna add these like There's a little mask here, as best as I can. Okay, there we go. Almost looks like a Lamborghini in the air. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, next, uh, I'm not gonna go to planes. Let's go to, uh, Gonna do like a <clears throat> we'll do like a soldier and a attention.
I hope this doesn't get co-opted by some uh, some regimes <laughs> to use as war propaganda. But I'm here to just celebrate the fact that um, there have been people who display bravery in the past. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with commending bravery, especially when it came at a great cost and we have a chance to honor them. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it a soldier who's at attention. can't remember if I saw the movie Patton or not. I feel like I have, but I just don't remember anything from it. Tension. Okay, then we're gonna get their little packs here. I don't know. I, I guess I'm going more towards the World War II aesthetic. <laughs> maybe maybe because uh, I don't know. I just like the aesthetic. I guess it's kind of a classic time. I think a little people. It's not as political as it, the other types of uh, eras of. war Okay, how about this?
attention. Alright, so we got a soldier. Next we have, let's see, we've done tanks, we've done uh, maybe a boat. How about how about that? How about boat? Maybe We could do like a boat where it's like <whistles> or that's not the song I'm singing whistling D Dixie for some reason how about uh, what's that Boy, what is that song that you sing when you uh... I was thinking about that the other day too I was like oh what's that song where you say uh... That you sing when it's like for for ships. Not did 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 did. It's uh, what is that? We're gonna draw ourselves. How about we draw ourselves a uh? we draw ourselves a destroyer How about that okay I'm just going off just reference here so I'm, there's nothing really that's uh, specific about this boat it's just that it's a I just looked up a destroyer and just uh, just kind of drawing from that reference so we're just gonna have our panda sailors Given these Donald Duck <laughs> sailor hats. And I think we can do a couple of cabins here. Again, if you are someone who is very knowledgeable of nautical machinery and so forth, I apologize. I'm probably butchering this to the nth degree. But it really is fascinating though to see what is, how a ship is, because <laughs> we just think of like a boat and it's just a boat right but it's like there's so much stuff going on on these ships it's this little city especially an aircraft carrier little radar Be 
beep 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 I remember seeing this video about um, about battleships when they would fire a shell. It's like they, they could fire a shell like you know a few miles away, but they can't physically see the shell because of the curvature of the Earth. So they have to like account for that. <clears throat> and it would take like ten minutes for that shell to reach the intended target. But it's like you just <laughs> you know you just fire it and then you just wait, see what happens, and then. Eventually, you'll get confirmation if it if it hit or not. Pretty fascinating stuff back in the day. I'm gonna have this guy just off the edge fishing. Oh, there's the song. Yeah, my computer seems to be bugging out a little bit. Let's, uh, I'm going to have a couple of these guys carry a torpedo. That's how a torpedo looks, but <laughs> and I don't think they'd be carrying it on the deck of a ship. I think it has like a propeller sort.
And then there would be a captain, of course. Let's put the captain up here. Wait, a lot's going into this destroyer. <laughs> okay, little rivets here to kind of show the another panda in here looking at the binoculars Okay, then we can add like little things, uh, the details like, uh, I don't know, seams. Yeah, it's probably too, too much in the middle there. So we can just go like that. Uh, we can just connect it down there. Okay. Little guy wires here and there that kind of just connect things together, kind of like a, like a real old ship, you know, like the little sailing ships they had back in the day. It's gonna add some just miscellaneous detail to kind of just add to the. Okay, I'm gonna call that quit. So I think we are pretty much at the end of our time. Started a little bit early, but anyways, I think uh, pretty much at, at the end of today's session. So thanks a lot guys for, for those of you who are tuning in or those of you who are watching this after I'm done. Uh, again, you guys can download these sheets for free at punchingpandas.com slash scribble time. Be sure to check out other things on the site uh, at punchypandas.com like the store uh, I have books um, you know the panda is fat and other panda haikus also feel free if you guys would like to see more uh, if there's other things you guys would like to see on this content or if you have any drawing topics you like for me to draw uh, don't be afraid to just uh, message me on Facebook Instagram Twitter what have you uh, and I'll, I'm on there so um, that's this is punching pandas uh, wishing you guys all a great um, Memorial Day. So, uh, so enjoy your memorial, rest of your Memorial Day, uh, and um, yeah, uh, give uh, be thankful to those who have uh, helped you out 
um, not only in the military, but those who have all, who have aren't here anymore, but that we're uh, we have the opportunity to think. So with that, I'll see you guys later and have a great rest of the day.